Hello, my friends. My name is Darren Gertis, just a professor trying to give you some context in the war in Ukraine. So it is Friday, March 22nd, 2024. We're going to talk about how the Ukrainians have been hitting these oil refineries in Russia and how this has affected the war in Russia and how the, there was an article in the Financial Times that just came out talking about how the U.S. doesn't want them to hit oil refineries. So we'll talk about all of that, how much they've taken offline, what the U.S. was actually saying those sort of things. Okay, so we'll start with this with Russian oil refinery bingo. And it's it's really interesting when you look at this, how much uh, they've been able to hit with impunity. Um, let's start with the latest news, which was from the Financial Times. This was that the U.S. urged Ukraine to halt strikes against Russian oil refineries. Now, one of my viewers, this is uh, another academic, smart guy, uh, he said, hey, I can only trace this to one source, that's the Financial Times. So take this with a little bit of a grain of salt, because it, it could be that something's not quite right here with the, you know, you've only gotten it from one source. But nonetheless, I let, let's say this is the case. Okay, the U.S. has urged Ukraine to halt attacks on Russia's in energy infrastructure, warning that the drone strikes risk driving up global prices and provoking retaliation, according to three people familiar with the discussions. Okay, so three people familiar with discussions, didn't say who it was, how high they are in the administration, that sort of thing. Maybe it is. Let's, let's assume that it is. The repeated warnings from Washington were delivered to senior officials at Ukraine's State Security Service, the SBU, and its military intelligence directorate known as the GUR, the people told the Financial Times. Both intelligence units have steadily expanded their own drone programs to strike Russian targets on land, sea, and in the air since the start of the Kremlin's full-scale invasion in February 2022. One person said that the White House had grown increasingly frustrated by brazen Ukrainian drone attacks that have struck oil refineries, terminals, depots, and storage facilities. Do you want them to win or don't you? Like Biden, that's the White House. Biden, you're supposed to be on their team. You're supposed to be doing everything that you can. And it's a cursed Mike Johnson who's the problem. And you're doing everything that you can. Are you really or aren't you? Because if you are, then you wouldn't be sending that message. It sounds like you're still trying to appease the Russians. If this is the case, I don't know that it is, but if it is, it sounds like appeasement. Oil prices have risen about 15% this year to $85 a barrel, pushing up fuel costs just as U.S. President Joe Biden begins his campaign for re-election. Okay, and that makes sense of what could be going on. I don't know that that is what's going on, but that could be what's going on. Now, that 15% number is the year. It's not what happened in the last month, and that's going to be important to unpack in a little bit. Washington is also concerned that if Ukraine keeps hitting Russian facilities, including many that are hundreds of miles from the border, Russia could retaliate by lashing out at energy infrastructure relied on by the West. Really? So you're worried now that they might be retaliating? Do you know what happened last night? 151, either drones or missiles or something, lashing out at Ukraine already? Like, come on, this that's a pretty ridiculous argument. And if they strike into the West, into NATO, they don't want to play that game. We do not encourage or enable attacks inside Russia, an NSC spokesperson said. <laughs> We understand the appeals of our American partners, the Stefshiana told an audience in the Kyiv Security Forum. At the same time, we are fighting with the capabilities, resources, and practices that we have today. That's exactly right. And if you're Ukraine, that's exactly what you need to do. This is the right path. Taking out their oil and gas and whatever else that you're going to go after that funds them. A third of their government is funded by these natural resources. If you can, if you can strangle that, you're a long way toward winning something. The U.S. objections come as Biden faces a tough re-election battle this year with petrol prices on the rise, increasing almost 15% this year to around $3.50 a gallon. Nothing terrifies a sitting president more than a surge in pump prices during an election year. Kiev also wants to deliver a symbolic blow by bringing the war closer to Moscow and showing its air defenses, including those around the Kremlin, can be penetrated. The air campaign is also seen by some officials as a means to spurring Washington into approving $60 billion assistance package held up in Congress that is critical for Ukraine defense. Now, I don't know that that's true, that last little line, but maybe it is. We'll come back to that at the very end.
Let's go on and just look at one more thing. Here's Reuters talking about the same thing, but they had this little paragraph or this little line in here that I think is very important. The attacks helped boost oil prices that have risen nearly 4% since March 12, when Ukraine first started targeting Russia's energy infrastructure. So it's not 15% since they started doing this. It's 15% for the year, and that's because of other ongoing things in the war with Russia and other whatever's going on geopolitically. But 4% just since that time, that's pretty significant. But 4 is not 15, and we don't want to confound that. Okay, um, Noel reports, and yet the U.S. is talking about red lines Ukraine shouldn't cross, oil refineries Ukraine shouldn't attack, all because of global price instability, shameful request. Absolutely, you're right. That is shameful. We shouldn't be asking for that. There's no reason that we should be asking for that if we're looking at prices at the at like like I know that prices at the gas pump are going to go up for me, and yet I still believe that this is the right course of action. When does the U.S. think these mass attacks are going to stop? Only when Russia is on its knees. After each missile or terror attack, innocent people die. Russia will keep utilizing this power until it can't bear the consequences of retaliation attacks anymore. That's exactly right. So I, I've said this for a while now, and I think that this is true. I, I could be wrong. I've been wrong about other things. I think that the war ends not when Russia is beaten on the battlefield in Ukraine as much as the combination of, of wearing down the Russian troops in Ukraine and punching at them economically in Russia is going to cause Russia to find this to be unstable or unsustainable anymore. It's not going like they're going to have to surrender or give up or capitulate or withdraw or whatever because the economy at home is being so devastated by what's going on both in Ukraine and in Russia. And I think it's that is what's going to cause it rather than just simple defeat on the battlefield. Although, hey, if it was defeat on the battlefield and you could just wipe Russians off the uh, Ukrainian battlefield, I, that would be fine by me. But I think the way it'll go is what I just said about the economy at home being so shaken by this that that's what's going to cause it. That's my prediction. Again, my crystal ball is murky, but they're going after what they should be going after. Absolutely no question about it. Preservation of worldwide peace goes above anything else. Do you want Ukraine to win? Do something about it. But stop crying about Ukraine doing exactly what Russians are doing for over two years. Stop. That's not fair to Ukrainians. The Ukrainians aren't doing what Russians have been doing for years. The Ukrainians have been targeting apartment buildings. They've been targeting um, uh, energy facilitation so that people are in the cold. What, Ukraine, what Ukrainians have been doing is different. They're actually choking out the source of the oil, not you know hitting in winter to you know make people freeze. That will be an effect, yes, but the effect is to go after the uh, oil and gas and whatever else in order to stop the funding of the war, and that's a that's a big difference. It's not the same as what the Russians have been doing. Trying to shut down Ukraine's energy and grain sector and its economy. No, what the Russians were doing was different. Um, but above all, trying to destroy its nation and citizens. Start sending weapons that matter. Ukrainians are tired of condemnations or being told what to do. And if I was him, I feel I, I, I'm not I'm not him, and I feel the same way. I mean, he's he's right. Okay. Um, now I was watching Joe Blogs just yesterday, and before that article hit, I was going to show you this. So he he has this video which is, it was titled, and it's. It's a little clickbaitish. He does. I, I don't know that he meant it to be, but it sounds almost clickbaitish. When it was drone attacks hit 45% of Russians' oil capacity, and he explains it's not that 45% is knocked out, but they hit at places that if they were knocking all this out, it would have been worth 45% of Russia's total oil capacity, and they've proven that they've been able to hit it. Let's hear. We're going to see three little clips and hear what it has to say, and then I'll link it below so that you can watch the whole thing if you want to. To the table, and that's exactly what they're doing with these drone attacks. This map shows some of Russia's major oil refineries and provides details of those that have been attacked so far. Now in terms of determining exactly what's going on on this map, the dots represent the location of the oil refineries and the circles that surround those dots indicate the percentage of Russia's total refinery output that that refinery relates to. So basically what that means is that the bigger the circle, the bigger the percentage output. 
On the second, now this is pretty impressive that the Ukrainians have been able to hit here, 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 here. Right? Like that's that's pretty phenomenal. So these are all of the refineries that Ukraine has successfully targeted so far. And the reason that I wanted to show this chart is really to take account of the percentage of Russia's processing that these facilities mm -hmm. account for. Because if you add up all of the figures here, it equates to 45% of Russia's total processing capacity. Yeah, so that's where we got the 45% figure from. Last little bit from Joe Bloggs is this. Listen to this. Price of Ural's crude oil, which is the main crude oil being produced by Russia over the last 12 months. And as you can see here, the price of Ural's oil has also increased significantly over the last couple of months. On January the 19th, just before Ukraine commenced its drone attacks, a barrel of Euros oil was trading for around $63. Today, it's trading for closer to $79, which you may think is good news from Russia's point of view. The price of their oil has gone up, so therefore they should be making more money. But if you think about what's going on right now, the problem that Russia has is that their capacity has gone down. Mm -hmm. So whilst the price has gone up, the volume of oil that they're selling is actually reducing which means that they're getting less income. It's estimated that as a result of the attacks that have taken place so far, Russia has lost around 900,000 barrels of oil per day. So yeah. if you do a simple calculation of 900,000 barrels of oil times $79, that equates to around $71 million per day of lost revenue. However, the city... So that, that's like the equivalent of two or three Su-34s. Now, a Su-34 can actually do a lot of damage, but as far as the financial, that's like the cost of knocking two or three Su-34s out of the sky, and that's a pretty significant amount per day. The situation is actually worse than that because the refined products sell for a lot more than the crude oil price. They sell for somewhere between $100 and $150 per barrel, depending on what grade of refined product we're talking about. So the 900,000 barrels per day capacity that Russia has lost equates to somewhere between 90 and $135 million per day, per day of lost revenue, which on an annualized basis equates to somewhere between 32 and $50 billion of revenue. How about that? 32 and $52 billion. That's what it's depriving Russia of if they can actually do it for what they have done so far. And that's with only about 14% of Russia's capacity offline. Okay. It might be a little bit more, 14, 15. And so if they can do that again, and they have shown that they have the ability to hit up to 45% right? They have the ability to do that. And so they can double, maybe even triple that before like Russia just doesn't have air defense around here and they've proven that they don't. So that's where we are with that. Now, last little bit. Again, I first saw this as a RT article just because I, I tend to read a lot of this. U.S. told Kiev to stop strikes according to the Financial Times. And they said this same kind of thing. You know, White House has grown increasingly frustrated by the brazen Ukrainian drone attacks. Washington's objections come months before a presidential election in the U.S. where Biden faces a tough re-election battle this year with petrol prices on the ride increasing almost 15% this year, the newspaper noted. Now, the newspaper did note that, but remember, it's only been 4% that's been increasing since uh, the drone attack started on about March 12th. And last little bit, and this also came right out of the Financial Times article that I read with you, some sources also suggested that Kiev was using this strategy to pressure Washington to approve $60 billion in proposed aid for Ukraine. Now, I don't know that that's the case. They're just doing what they can with what they have. Um, but if I I was Donald Trump, by the way, before we do that, let's look at the Exxon Mobil price. It went from a 104 uh, a month ago to 113 per share now, like should have bought a month ago. Like <laughs> that's, that's good stuff. And it's going to go up. So if you're still, I mean, if they keep doing this, if the Ukrainians keep bombing these facilities, this stock has to rise. Okay. At any rate, if I was Donald Trump right now, and I'm not, and I'm not advocating this, but if I was him, I'd be like, Hey, Mike Johnson, listen, I want you to push that Ukraine stuff through, make sure they have plenty of drones to go attack uh, Russia's oil. Like make sure that's in the package. If, if that's in the package, make it sail through. Why? Because that would hurt his opponent. If the financial times and RT by, you know, if the, if the financial times is right about what they're saying and it, and Biden's worried about it for that reason, it would just make Trump look better. But 
Okay, that's where we are. Tell me what you think about all of this analysis. What am I missing? What am I not understanding? Um, I know I don't think that Trump's going to do that. That's not. I, I don't think it's for that reason. But I do think we're seeing something legitimate that Biden just has a, a knee jerk reaction to not provoking the opponent. Like not not a crossing a red line where he should be by all rights. All right. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the likes, the shares, the subscribes, and the coffees. And thank you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.